Journal entry, January 19, 2009. It's 3 a.m. Winter storm. Temperature outside is 2.7. Can't sleep. I'm awake more than I'm asleep. I'm trying to organize in my head a fundraiser for the upcoming summer. I'd like to get 8 to 10 moms or dads and climb Mount Rainier. We're hoping something happens this year. Got to save little Evan. Bill Proco called me in January, I believe, and told me about a great idea for a fundraiser, climbing Mount Rainier. Seven months later, I'm on the summit of Mount Rainier. Uh, Kira Duchenne, Deborah and Paul, bam, they just, they took it. We decided to send out an email blast, which we did, and we got a lot of volunteers immediately for the 2009 Climb to Cure Duchenne. Twelve climbers warmed up yesterday at the Seattle REI store. They're getting ready to climb Mount Rainier to raise money and awareness. The participants will raise a dollar for every foot they climb. The four-day climb will raise money to help beat Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a deadly disease that strikes thousands of boys a year. Driving up, we had a little uh, opportunity to see the mountain on the freeway and the car got really quiet because it looked pretty massive and I thought, we're gonna go up there. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I always said I would do anything if I could change this for Christopher. I would take his place, I would be sick instead. Um, but climbing a mountain was definitely something in that realm of activities that were just kind of out of my reach. For, for me to do this was extraordinary. And the thing about the mountain is when you see it as you're hiking towards it before you even get close, you see this icy peak in the distance. It really freaks you out. The same thoughts can freak you out when, when you're going for a cure. What you do is you look at your feet, just like when you mountain climb, you go one step at a time. I'm Paul Miller. We have a team of 12 people here climbing for Cure Duchenne. Hi, Deborah Miller from Corona Del Mar. Paul and I founded Cure Duchenne. I'm Christian Shaw from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Here's my brother Zach. We've been helping Cure Duchenne for four or five years. Hi, I'm Thomas Sir. I currently live in Northern Virginia. I'm Zach Shaw from Minneapolis. Hi, I'm Bill Proko. I'm from Gainesville, Florida area. And my five-year-old son, Evan, has Duchenne Muscular. My name is Sean Marshall. I'm from Orange County. I'm Barry Byrne. I'm from the University of Florida. I work on uh, treatments for muscular dystrophy, and I'm glad to be out here, motivated to help these folks find a cure for Duchenne. It was interesting seeing the dynamics of the group. There were those that uh, clearly uh, mindset, they were ready, they were okay. Others weren't listening to the guides and weren't following rules. Several of the people on the team, they don't even have a, a son with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. They're doing this just because they heard about it. People from all walks of life here to help us out. Psyched. Good weather's coming. We've got a great class to climb for. Come. Just ready to go, man. Ready to do it. Okay, man. Nothing to do it. 9.30, uh, we head up the mountain, and it's just so gorgeous. It's a beautiful day. We're all in shorts climbing up this mountain. I was really struggling to keep up with the pace. The pace was probably about 40% faster than I had thought it would be. And that really threw me. This is not a small hill. This is a, a volcano, an active volcano, with glaciers and ice falls. And I had tried it twice before and not summited due to avalanche conditions. It was uh, amazing, this ice flow. The first time we stepped on that, I think, whoa, is this really gonna, am I really gonna be able to walk on this uphill skating rink without sliding down? I mean, that was just amazing to me. We have arrived. Just a walk in a national park. Oh, yeah, nothing to it. <laughs> I feel like it's the most I've ever done. Yeah, the, the one ice field, the one where it was just all ice, that long stretch, just tough. I agree with Dave, that ice field kicked my butt. It's gorgeous, it was a challenge, it was beautiful. We got to walk on God's campus today. Camp Mir was exactly what they described as this very uh, rustic dive uh, outhouses that smell a very cramped quarter. This is called the Hell Cave, and we sleep from 6.30 to midnight, but we don't really sleep. All of a sudden, it was 11.30, and Seth came in the, the hut and said, guys, it's time. I give Deborah a hug in the dark, and off we go down this step into the abyss that we'd watched these rocks fall over you know, five, six hours before. To see them walking off up the mountain and the headlights getting dimmer and dimmer, 
It was, it was a very surreal experience. I carried this up with me the, the whole way up to the summit of the mountain. When I would feel like crashing and I couldn't move on, I would sort of pull this out of my jacket and look up. There's Evan, a little picture, and he'd be my little motivator. His little shining eyes looking up at me saying, Daddy, come on, you can keep going. The highlight of the whole trip was about quarter to seven in the morning. I was talking to one of the guides out. It was really cold. I had my big parka on, and I heard his radio crackle. And it was the lead guide saying, it's almost seven o'clock and we reached the sun. So I wonder how are you? A little bit of a storm. Woo! I'm off the table, boys. It was a real rush. The weather closed in. We were supposed to spend 45 minutes at the top for banner shots and to just sort of reflect. Um, instead, we had 10 minutes. The wind was probably 45 miles per hour. The temperatures were below freezing, so that plus wind chill just made it downright difficult. Hawkin, I love you. Deborah, I love you. I this for you guys. At that point, I, I knew it was going to be emotional for me when I got to the top, but at that point, it got real heavy for me. And I knew that this was pretty special, what we were doing, and also pretty intense. Just being with the energy that was on that rope convinces me that this is the most pivotal time in the history of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and things are, are on the verge of happening big time. We were watching the top of the mountain. We knew which ridge they were going to be coming over and somebody spotted some heads, and we started hooting and hollering and cheering. It was cool, it was cool. I felt good until felt the good. last stretch. I felt good until the very last stretch. I was like, oh, I'm starting to get tired. The best thing to do is just do it in the dark because yeah. you have no idea what you're like stepping over. If you went out over that route during the day, there's no way you would finish. Hit your axe and you just like slip a little. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, my mind changed. I'm like, all right, I can do this. I would have made it. Really? You would have made what? Oh, way, I mean, you just had to dig deep. Very special moment uh, when we finally got down three hours later. We got down about four o'clock, I think. Uh, Hawkham, our son, was waiting for us, and it was a little family reunion. So when I saw my parents coming down the mountain, I was really excited that they made it down, and they showed me that anything is possible. The world can definitely be changed by a small group of people, and the feeling I got from the, the whole climb was just that, that a small group of people managed to turn Mount Rainier into a life-saving symbol. The 2009 Climb to Cure Duchenne was a huge accomplishment for our organization and very rewarding for our team. Based on that success, we're launching Cure Duchenne Adventures, where ordinary people like you and I can do extraordinary things. Join us for our upcoming adventures, which will take us to beautiful places around the world provide once-in-a-lifetime experiences, and help save the lives of thousands of boys. There's nothing more fulfilling than a great adventure for an even greater cause. That way. It was a great day training. Um, self arrested. We're now hitting the hill to train on self arrest. I'm not sure that I want to arrest myself. I'm not quite clear what that means yet. I'm eating. I got some little warm, little food pouch here, little food yeah, baby. Good. Stomach baby. I'll show you a corner of it. That's mac and cheese. It's I already girl. took a little bite. The noodles are still hard. Yeah, then we came back down and it's like, do we? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, yeah, we did this at like 3 a.m. You know? I didn't wear sunglasses on the way down because I lost them. And now my eyes are squint or are red where I was squinting. We are approaching the summit.
Have your, have this is bad. Dog. Don't film this. <laughs> I'm fabulous. I feel fabulous. Can't, don't I look fabulous? That was an avalanche of rock, not snow. That is an avalanche of rock. Bring it to the T.O.P. All right.